Hey YouTube, today on the shop we have my wife's car in. It's a 2014 Ford Fusion with the 1.6 liter EcoBoost and we're going to be taking care of a check engine light that's kind of common on these. The Fiestas, pretty much anything that's got the 1.6 or the 2.0 EcoBoost, this problem can occur. So this car has around 63,000 miles on it, but um, this is a pretty common occurrence on a lot of other vehicles too. So what it has is a P007B and a P007C. And what that code is for is for the charge air cooler temp sensor. So on the intercooler, there's a sensor that doubles as a temperature sensor and also a pressure sensor. Um, I'm gonna leave a part number for it, for it in the description below. It's a little bit tricky when you call Ford, unless you have the part number, they're gonna send you a map sensor that goes on the intake, and then on the other side of the charge air cooler, there's also another temperature sensor, but this is a very specific sensor that doubles as a pressure sensor and as a temperature sensor. Um, on the Fusions, it is on the driver's side of the intercooler. On a few of the other vehicles, it is on the passenger side, so you're just gonna to have to look uh, based on your specific model, but. This code is very common, like I said earlier, on the 1.6 and the 2.0 EcoBoost in the Escape, the Fusion, the Fiesta, uh, I believe on the Focus too. Um, I personally haven't seen it on a Focus, but it's a very common occurrence. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what to look for, how to verify that that's actually what's wrong, and then after that, I'm gonna show you how to get to it. On the Fusion, it's really easy. It's kind of intimidating because if you look at the location of it, it's behind the bumper and uh, it can be very difficult to get to if you try to go that way. But if the engine's cool, you can actually reach your arm down and kind of blindly get down there, get a ratchet on, get the bolt off, and then pop the sensor out of the intercooler. So as you can see, we have two codes here. There's actually three, but this uh, clutch pedal position sensor, you can ignore that. That's another issue we have going on. It's uh, kind of an intermittent code on this car. But we have the P007B. Charge air cooler temperature sensor circuit range performance bank one. P007C, charge air cooler temperature sensor circuit low bank one. So this one's a pending, this one's a current. They're both related to the same situation. Um, this car in particular has no drivability issues. You wouldn't really know that it had an issue based on, on the way the car goes down the road, but some cars, depending on what happens with the sensor, you can experience a no start. Um, runs rough or there's a multitude of other symptoms that the car could could show but fortunately for us the only symptom we have is a failed state inspection and a check engine light so right now we're using a snap-on Zeus scanner um, you really can use any scanner that'll show data for the most part uh, if you can't then I mean this is a pretty common occurrence so just checking it seeing that you have those codes and throwing the part at it most likely will fix it, but what I always like to do first is check the connector. Uh, this car in particular went in for the coolant temperature, I mean the coolant level sensor recall, so they did put a harness in it, so you never really know what's unplugged, uh, what's been messed with, so check that first. All the connectors, make sure everything is plugged in nice and solid. If the connector is in good shape, the next thing you don't wanna do is go and look at your engine data so on this scanner, we're going to go data display, engine management data, wait for it to load. And then we're going to look for the charge air cooler temperature. So if you look right here, I mean, this car is off. It's been sitting for quite a while, so charge air temperature should be pretty close to room air, which right now we're about 90 degrees in the shop here. And charge air cooler temperature is at 266 degrees, which is the maximum that that sensor can read. So obviously we got an issue there. So once you verify the sensor's reading improperly, you've already checked that the connections are good. Um, I would say the next step would be go ahead and pull that sensor out. Let's get another one coming from Ford and we'll, uh, we'll pop a new one in. 
verify that the charge air temperature is back to a normal operating temperature, and then clear the codes, road test it, verify the repair. All right, so like I said earlier, the sensor is on, on the fusion is on the driver's side of the intercooler. Um, it is a little bit difficult to see, but uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the air box out of the way, get a little room, be able to get the camera in there and show you guys exactly what we're working with. Um, you could probably get the sensor out without taking the air box out of the way, but it does make life a lot easier and it allows you to see what you're doing. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna unplug the mass airflow sensor, take this clamp off that goes from the air box lid to the intake duct, and then there's a couple of bolts here that hold the, uh, the inlet to the um, air box off. Let's get those undone and then we'll go from there. Okay, so once you get this air box out, uh, this might be a little bit difficult to see. Hopefully you guys can see it okay. Um, once you get your air box out, you'll, you'll be able to see it better and make a little more sense to you. But down next to the radiator hose, it's actually, let me get this thing to focus. So there's your upper hose right there, and then you follow down a little bit farther and the sensor is right there. So what you're gonna wanna do first is unplug the connector, then there's a little bolt that holds it down to the side of it, and it's a T27 Torx bit. So take that bolt out after you undo the connector, and then just wiggle the sensor out. Just try to pull it out as straight as you possibly can. It has a little nipple on it that uh, that sticks off that you can break if you pull it off at an angle. So let's get that bolt out and then uh, I'll show you what the sensor looks like once it's out. So I haven't found this aftermarket yet. The only place that I've seen that carries it is Motocraft. So the part number, and I'll, like I said, I'll put a link in the description if I can get a link. If not, I'll just uh, I'll put the part number. But it's CX-2493. Um, that's a sensor number. And then the Ford, actual Ford part number is EL8Z-9F479-A. Now, like I said, as far as I've seen, I haven't found this aftermarket yet. Um, that doesn't mean it's not coming soon, but... This sensor can be had on Amazon for right around $50. Uh, might be a little bit more if you go straight to the Ford dealer, but um, you know it all depends. Sometimes, obviously, if you have an issue, it's easier to go to a Ford dealer than Amazon with the return and everything. But, um, I mean, if you're using OE parts, you should have pretty good luck. So my only suggestion is just put a little bit of either light oil or a little bit of grease on this O-ring on here to help you pop it in a little better, and then um, bolt it down. The bolt is more of like, you'll see it when you pull it out, it's almost like a screw. You don't really need to crank that thing down tight. Just bring it in until it's just snug and then uh, plug it in. And once we get the sensor back in, I'm going to show you what to look for on the data, what it should look like. And we're going to clear the code and verify the repair and we should be all set from there. All right, so we're going to go back in. We're going to check the data display. Go to engine management data. And we're going to look at that charge air cooler temperature. And as you can see now, it's 87.2 degrees, which is about what it is inside this shop right now. So we're pretty good. 
Ambient air temperature is reading 82, charge air cooler temperature is reading 87. So that's pretty close. I mean, you're going to have a little bit of variation between sensors, but um, that sensor took care of the problem. So now what we'll do is we'll go back. Go to the codes. We're going to clear the codes. And then I always like to do a key on engine off self test. If you don't have a really advanced scanner, this is something you might not be able to do. But if you have the ability to do it, go ahead and get that done. That's going to cycle through a bunch of the sensors. If anything pops up that's real obvious, it'll show right away. No codes present. So now I would take this for a road test, verify the repair, and uh, you should be all set from there. Well, guys, I really hope this helped you out. And, um, you know, it's, it's a relatively common problem. I think as these cars get some age on them, you're going to see it more often that this uh, comes up. Um, there's a few other codes that can be associated with it. And uh, Ford has released a technical service bulletin about this issue. But well, a lot of the time, the majority of these cars are out of warranty by the time this issue comes up. So even though Ford knows it's a common problem, there's probably not much they're going to do about it. So if you guys like what you saw, hit that subscribe button. Maybe hit that like button if you like the video and uh, leave me a comment if you have any other questions or if there's something else you want to see, don't be afraid to reach out to me. Hey guys, once again, thanks for watching In The Shop.